Hello everyone and welcome back to another edition of the Eleusinian Society. I'm so excited to share with you all the little ins and outs and behind the scenes of our trip to Boston that we just uh, got back from last night. Um, it was a very fun time. We saw a lot of historical places and interesting things along the way. Now, I've never been to the East Coast and neither has my girlfriend, um, so it was very foreign to us and I think that's what made it an especially interesting trip. All right, it is currently 4.45 in the morning. We are on our way to General Mitchell Airport in Milwaukee, and we have a flight at 8 a.m., but we're getting there early, and uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, it's crazy. I've, I've only been on one plane ride before. For starters, we had to wake up at about 4.30 in the morning to leave our house to go to General Mitchell Airport, which is about two hours away from our home. Um, and once we got there, we were very tired. We got some coffee along the way, uh, and we made our way into the terminal. Uh, we got on our plane, no issues whatsoever. And then we had a layover in Baltimore for five hours. Now, when you're in an airport terminal, five hours is a long time. Um, that wasn't too fun. Uh, we ended up having Big Macs for lunch and went about our way. On our plane ride to Boston, that's where things got interesting. We were sitting on the plane, it was extremely hot, and everyone was kind of like, oh my gosh, it's really, really warm on here, what's going on? Well, they had to delay us even further um, for maintenance issues, but we were required to stay on the plane. So that was fun. It was extremely hot. Everyone was angry. At least we met some interesting people on the plane that uh, we had some conversation with until we could get going. And once we were in the air, everything was fine. Until we got to Boston, there was a big thunderstorm and it was raining. And because of that, it took about 45 minutes uh, circling around Boston before we could land. Once we got to Boston, that's where it got even more intense because the traffic there is awful right now. Uh, there's a the Sumner Tunnel, which is like their main um, tunnel area in the city, is closed off. So we had to take an alternative route and find our way around a city that we've never been to before um, while it was dark out, and which made for some pretty uh, tense moments. So once we got out of the city, we got to Sudbury, where we were staying on a horse farm, and we realized very quickly that there's not a lot open um, in that area that late at night for food, and we were starving quite a bit. So we ended up finding the only place nearby, which was about a 18 minute drive away to Wendy's. And I got some of those sweet, sweet chicken nuggies and passed out. The first full day of our travel started with a breakfast trip to Duncan, and then we headed over to the Scottish Rite Masonic Museum and Library located in Lexington. We immediately met with the uh, director of archives and library there, Jeff Croto, uh, who was able to do a couple interviews with us. Um, and out of the kindness of his heart, he pulled out one of the museum's rarest artifacts and just went on a great lecture about the history behind it. We'll do a separate video on that uh, in the near future. Um, but it turned out amazing. Um, they were very kind there. And then after we did the uh, interview, we were escorted around the, uh, the library and museum by the collections manager Maureen, who showed us the two exhibits that they have going on there. One of them is called uh, the Masonic Hall of Fame, which uh, highlights the important Freemasons throughout American history over the last 200 years. Um, and that was, they had a lot of really cool artifacts of the appendant bodies, as well as Blue Lodge. And then we went to the other exhibit, which was called What's in a Portrait? And there was pictures and paintings and artifacts relating to um, the imagery and the symbols uh, behind Freemasonry, uh, especially when it comes to art. And so there was like a, an original painting of uh, Benjamin Franklin, which was pretty cool to look at, and other artifacts as well. After we were done at the museum, we ended up going out for sushi uh, for lunch and tried to find other things around Lexington um, that weren't Lexington Green, the, the battlefield, and there just wasn't a lot there, so we headed back to the uh, horse farm. Later that night, we decided to take a trip to Worcester, um, where we had the best prime rib that I've ever had in my life, and we met a couple of the locals there, um, and they were very 
fun to talk to. And then we finished off the night by going and having a little hookah session at a local hookah lounge, which is, uh, it's always fun. Day three was kind of a very chill day for us. We just wanted to go around and do some shopping. So we went to the Natick Mall um, and went to the Lego store and made custom figures that look like uh, myself and my girlfriend and our little rabbit, uh, Emmett. Um, and that, that was about it for that day. And then afterwards, we decided to go get seafood because when in Rome, you know, when in Boston, you have to go get seafood, which is something that we normally don't eat in our household because I am uh, allergic to shellfish. So my girlfriend decided to do a little splurging and get some lobster tails. I had the sea bass, and then we took the dive and both tried oysters, raw oysters, for the first time. All right, here we go. Are we rolling? Yep. All right, I'm going to put some shallots and champagne on here. <laughs> right. I was also told to have a little bit of this on here. Here goes nothing. That is really good. All right, she's she's putting the she's putting the lemon on. All right, it's all yours to try. Just slurp it. <laughs> No, which is something that we just don't do in the in the good old Midwest. <laughs> day number four we spent in Concord. We started our day by going to the Concord Museum, and I had talked to some of the directors there to see if they would want to do an interview uh, about the American Transcendentalist movement. Uh, all of a sudden, a bunch of people started coming out and asking us questions as to our intentions. So it just didn't really seem like uh, we were going to be able to get an interview. Um, so we just walked around and took some pictures. Two of the artifacts there that I thought were very interesting uh, were a flute and a bed that were owned by Henry David Thoreau uh, while he was writing Walden at Walden Pond. And another piece was the writing desk of which uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson wrote his book Self-Reliance on. The upstairs level of this museum was really the highlight though. That's where they had the Battle of Lexington and Concord room where they uh, tell the history of the first battle in the American Revolution as well as uh, a bunch of artifacts from that time period and from that area. The most interesting uh, artifact on that level, I would say, is definitely a, uh, the lantern that sits in the middle of the room. It was a lantern that hung up at a church in Concord, and it was a part of the Paul Revere ride. They, you know, one if by land, two if by sea. Well, this was one of the lanterns that they would have lit uh, if the British were coming by either land or sea. So very, very cool to see that important piece of history, because if it wasn't for those lanterns, we might be a British uh, Commonwealth country. My walk has become rather sillier recently, and so it takes me rather long. After the museum, we went to Walden Pond and saw the replica of Henry David Thoreau's cabin there. Uh, got to see what uh, his abode would have looked like while he was writing his book. And then we took a two-mile hike around the uh, pond. And once I found a nice scenic area towards the back of the pond, I decided to make the stupidest decision of my whole entire life. And I got down on my knee and I asked my best friend to marry me. That's right, I am now engaged. So very, uh, it, was a, it was a good place to do it, I feel, because she did a college research paper on Walden and Henry David Thoreau. And just being on the banks of the river around the nature and the plants and the, the water, uh, it just really kind of, uh, it, it was peaceful. It, it, was a, it was a perfect place to be in your thoughts and kind of um, take it all in and really understand your place in the universe. The next day, on Friday, we went to Salem, Massachusetts, and uh, went to the Witch Trial Museum, which was pretty interesting. I mean, it, it's not like, it's definitely a tourist trap. It's not like the coolest museum, but they do have a really cool production that they put on with wax figures, and uh, they got sound effects and lights and... Um, yeah, it's just uh, it, it's a, one of those places where you have to go just to see it. Um, 
if you've been there before and you're returning, I, you wouldn't go there again. But just to be there for the first time and kind of get caught up in it. Then we walked around the main alleyway, which is all cobblestone, and it looks really cool. Um, and we came across, out of all things, a Polish deli. Now, I am half Polish myself, uh, so I had to stop in and see what it was all about. And we got talking to the lady behind the counter who had some choice words for my parents. Go ahead. Should I say it in Polish or in English? In Polish. Dlaczego pani nie nauczyła jego mówić po polsku? Taki fajny chłopak. Pozdrawiam. Now, most of you probably don't know what she said. Uh, basically, to translate, she said, I can't believe that you didn't teach him Polish when he was a kid. She was very sweet. We finished the day by going to an authentic South Indian restaurant in Woburn and called it a night after watching a couple episodes of The Office. The next day, Saturday, we went back to Salem and kind of visited some of the shops. And after going to countless uh, witchcraft and occultist shops, I pulled the trigger and decided to go to get my cards read, my tarot cards read, which ended up pretty interesting. The lady that I went and saw, her name was uh, Angela. She was very sweet and she was able to tell me things about my personal life that I did not inform her on, um, which was very spooky uh, and very interesting. Like one of the cards that she pulled, she says, oh, this means that you work uh, somewhere in like technology, maybe social media. And then she said, without warranting it, she says, oh, do you do uh, like videos, like videography? Uh, I was like, yeah, I do. Um, so that was very unexpected. But after that, naturally, uh, my girlfriend, sorry, my fiance <laughs> had to uh, go get her cards read too. And um, we just had a fun time with that. Then we headed back to the hotel and awaited the dreaded next morning where we were going to get on the plane early and leave to go back home. It's 5.30 in the morning and we're about to leave our hotel for the last time. Back to real life. Back to reality. Back to life. <laughs> Back to reality. Now I have a list of five things that I learned while in Massachusetts that if any of you are thinking about traveling there that you should know. The first thing on the list is the traffic is awful. Uh, anywhere you go um, on the highways, I mean people are going to be honking, it's always backed up, things are constantly stopping. It, it literally takes half an hour to go 10 miles. Um, it, it's It's kind of crazy how uh, the traffic is structured there. You'll come up to an intersection and there'll just be like um, a fork that goes into a highway that goes into a roundabout. It's just very crazy. So if you're going there for the first time, I suggest maybe take it a little slow your first time driving there. If you're not on the highways, that's where it gets really interesting. All the roads are very curvy and so you're constantly swerving and going uphill and downhill and turning and it's all at like 30, 40 miles per hour, which pretty much led me to get carpal tunnel by the end of the, uh, by the, end of the experience. The second thing that I learned while in Massachusetts is the accent. Now, you kind of have this unrealistic expectation in the Midwest of, you know, people on the East Coast, especially Boston area, they, they talk like, uh, how far have you gone to find your car keys, smarty? You know, like that language. Not everyone has that accent in the Boston area, but the people who do have it bad. I mean, it's like there was one guy that we met while in Worcester. Uh, we were sitting there talking to him, and he's like, oh, is this your first time in Worcester? So and I couldn't understand what he was saying, so I just kind of was like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Number three on my list, there are actual witches in Salem to this day. Um, anywhere you go in Salem, you'll find a shop relating to witchcraft, and there are people who practice all sorts of uh, like occultism and magic. Um, there's card readers everywhere. There's um, aura pictures. There's people that do Reiki. Um, everywhere you go, there's still a, an alive and well culture. One of the ladies I ended up talking to who is a tarot card reader out there, um, said that there is an, kind of an underground uh, Ordo Templi Orientis or like Golden Dawn group that meets. Um, so that was pretty interesting. I thought that it ended, uh, you know, 300 years ago, but here we are today with actual people in Salem who practice witchcraft. The fourth thing that I learned while in Massachusetts was there's really not a lot to do outside of Boston after 9 p.m., Anywhere that you want to go that has anything after 9 p.m., whether it be bars or restaurants or just fun stuff, 
uh, is not really open after nine and you have to travel far to do anything if you want to. Uh, like I said, the first night that we were there, we ended up going to Wendy's at 10.30 p.m. because that was the only place that was open, and it was 20, 20 minutes away. So, yeah, if you're going to the Boston area and you want to go out to the bars and have fun on weekdays, uh, good luck. Get some liquor, go back to your hotel room, and enjoy it there. I should mention that it, that is a concept that's very foreign to me because I grew up in Wisconsin and we're like the drunkest state in the United States. Hey, right, what's the uh, monthly tab at for me? Only $300? Hey guys, next round's on me. Good deal. Yeah. 300 bucks is nothing. Uh, the fifth thing that I learned about Massachusetts is that the people are actually incredibly nice. Everyone that we sat down and talked to or passed, uh, we had great conversation with. They were always willing to help us out, um, just not while they're behind the wheel of a car. When they're behind the wheel of a car, they just become something very different. It's like demons take over their body. Uh, but if you catch a person in Massachusetts outside of a car, um, they're genuinely pretty nice and very helpful. I urge anyone who is looking to do some traveling in the future, check out the Boston area. I think that you'll have a great time, a fun time, and you'll learn quite a bit about American history because that was really the epicenter of the American Revolution. And as always, we are the Eleusinian Society. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And just letting everyone know, we do have merch available. I'm wearing one of our uh, t-shirts here. Um, it says in Greek, if you die before you die, then you won't die when you die. So if you want to pick up one of these t-shirts, check out our merch shop. You can find the link on our uh, YouTube channel. Um, I'll also put the link down below for all of you. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and thanks for watching. The spirit of Massachusetts is the spirit of America. The spirit of what's old and what's new. The spirit of Massachusetts is the spirit of America, the spirit of the red, white, and blue.